Hey guys, uh, let's go ahead and do a couple more examples with special trig limits. So uh, we'll do two more, and they'll be a little more complicated um, than the ones we've seen already. So for example six, let's take the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine x divided by x squared. <clears throat> so um, again, if we try direct substitution, which we always should first, uh, that we're going to have 1 minus 1, right? Cosine of 0 is 1, so we're going to have 0 on the top, and uh, on the bottom we have a 0 squared, which is a 0. So direct substitution gives us 0 over 0. Um, <coughs> sad face. And what we do is go to our special trig limits here, and we see, okay, this kind of looks like this, right? But instead of x, uh, instead of an x, we have an x squared. So that's no good. Um, now what can we do? We can't just pull an x out, right? Uh, the limit depends on x, so we can't pull x outside of the limit, because that's just going to change everything completely around, and that's uh, not really allowed. Uh, you can never ever do that. Okay, if the limit depends on x, then x has to stay inside of the limit. Now yeah, you can multiply and divide uh, you know, by certain things, um, but you can't pull any x's out of the limit. So actually, uh, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to have to do some algebraic manipulations here. So let's go ahead and multiply um, the top and the bottom by 1 plus cosine of x. Okay. Um, so how do we know to do that? Honestly, it's just something you kind of pick up from experience. Um, the more you work with problems like this, the more you'll know what to do and try next. Uh, so, you know, if you look at this, you see 0 over 0 from direct substitution, so you think, okay, can I factor? Well, no, uh, there's nothing good to factor here. Um, can we do something like with piecewise functions, like we did with the absolute value stuff, and no, that won't work here either. Um, and then the other thing you want to think about is algebraic manipulation. So if nothing else works, um, then go ahead and try some kind of algebraic manipulation. And usually that'll involve, or actually, pretty much almost always, algebraic manipulations will involve multiplying by 1 in a fancy way, which is what we're doing here, right? This divided by that's just 1, and we're just multiplying everything by 1 in a fancy way, um, in a way that's useful to us also. <clears throat> um, usually it'll involve that. So let's go ahead and expand this and see what we get. Um, this equals the limit as x approaches 0 of what's going to happen on top. So it's a nastier expression, kind of, because it's got cosine in it, but we're just going to FOIL, all right? So <clears throat> here, if we FOIL that, uh, first gives us 1, so 1, outer gives us plus cosine x, inner gives us minus cosine x, so those cancel, that's good, um, and then last is going to give us minus cosine squared of x, so minus cosine squared of x, all right? And what happens on the bottom? Uh, x squared times 1 plus cosine of x. <clears throat> so let's just leave it like that. Let's not expand the bottom. Um, I guess another thing worth pointing out is when you multiply uh, the top and the bottom by the same thing here, kind of try to do something that um, so that when you FOIL either the top or the bottom, um, you're going to get the outer and the inner terms canceling. Because okay, uh, remember, when we did algebraic manipulations before, that's, uh, that's always what happened when we FOILed. We always had the outer and the inner terms canceling. Um, and the same thing is going to happen here, right? So usually when you do algebraic manipulations, uh, that's kind of what you want to look for, is multiply the top and the bottom by something so that whenever you FOIL, whether you FOIL on the top or the bottom, um, you always want the outer and the inner to, inner to cancel. So, all right, what happens next? Uh, here we have to think about some trig properties, uh, trig identities, to be more specific. So limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine squared of x divided by x squared times uh, 1 plus cosine x here. So remember the identity. Um, let's come over here for a sec. Sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. Okay, so that's the, uh, one of the basic Pythagorean identities from trig that's uh, really, really extremely important, and it's one that you should always remember. Um, for the rest of your life, I'd say. Uh, it will get you out of some tight jams every now and then. So here, how can we use this uh, to help us over here? Well, 1 minus cosine squared x, let's come back up here and subtract cosine squared x from both sides. Then we'll have sine squared of x 
equals 1 minus cosine squared of x. All right? So we know that 1 minus cosine squared of x is the same thing as sine squared of x. So that's good. Um, let's go ahead and use that fact here. So this is the limit now as x approaches 0 of sine squared of x uh, divided by x squared times 1 plus cosine of x. All right. So now uh, what do we kind of see happening here? So here's sine squared of x, here's x squared, and then 1 plus cosine of x just kind of floating around there. Uh, if we ignore the 1 plus cosine x, what do we have? We have limit as x goes to 0, here's the sine squared of x, here's an x squared. This is kind of looking a little bit like this, right? Like this uh, first special trig limit here, it kind of looks a little bit like that, right? Um, but this is kind of in the way here. But um, we can actually split this up into a product of two limits, right? So uh, this is actually equal to the limit as x approaches 0. Uh, before we split it up into a product of two limits, let's split up just this in here um, in a more clear way. So we're going to say sine squared of x over x squared times 1 over 1 plus cosine of x. All right, so we have this. So now we can split this up as a product of a limit of this and a limit of this. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll come back up here. Might run out of room here soon. Uh, this equals the limit as x approaches 0 of... Um, let's write it like this. So here we have sine squared of x over x squared. That's the same thing as saying this. Sine of x over x, whole thing squared. Right? Because remember, um, if you have a squared over b squared, that's the same thing as saying a over b, whole thing squared. Okay? So um, here instead of a, we have sine of x, and instead of b, we have just plain x. So that's the property we're using here. And we'll see why we're doing that in a sec. Um, and then times this other one here, limit as x goes to 0 of this guy. So limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over 1 plus cosine of x. Okay. Um, now, this first one here. Remember, um, one of the properties of limits that we talked about was you can uh, take a limit and push it inside of an exponent, right? So that was one of the properties of limits we talked about a while back. So we can take this and shove it on up into this exponent here. And we're going to have limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x. And then that whole thing is now going to be squared. <clears throat> All right. Um, and then times what can we do over here? Well, here we can actually do direct substitution now. So take the limit as x goes to 0 of this guy here, uh, directly substitute, what happens? If x is 0, then we have cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So we have 1 over 1 plus 1. All right. Uh, and then how about this limit here? So this is one of our special trig limits. All right. And uh, it equals 1. Okay, limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x equals 1. So that's one of our special trig limits. So we have 1 squared times 1 half. <clears throat> or in other words, uh, 1 squared is just 1. 1 times 1 half is just 1 half. So our final answer, for example, 6 is 1 half. Okay? All right. So uh, let's see one more example. that's uh, kind of like example 6, but just a little more complicated. But um, we're, actually, oops, we're actually going to use the result from example 6. So example 7 won't be that long. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's see. Example 7. Uh, let's take the limit as t approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of 3t uh, divided by 8t squared. Okay, so this kind of looks like example 6 a little bit, right? Um, in example 6 we just had x, x, and x squared, but now we have t, 3t, and 8t squared. So um, let's start out just like before. We're going to pull out this 8 on the bottom. And because it's on the bottom, it's a 1 8th, right? So this is going to equal uh, 1 over 8 
times the limit as t approaches zero of one minus cosine of three t over t squared. Yeah, we probably could have done a little more on that first step, but it's uh, good to keep them separate when we're going over examples like this. So, uh, what can we do next? Well, this is a little more complicated than example six, only slightly, but let's, um, let's see, all right, before we had x, x and x squared. Now we have t, a 3t up here, and a t squared. So let's try and make this so that it's um, <clears throat> 3t, 3t, and 3t quantity squared. Okay. So in other words, um, let's make this so that it's 3t squared, like this. Okay. Because basically what we want to have is a thing, a thing, and whatever that thing is squared down here. All right. Because before our thing was x, 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 and x squared, and this time our thing is 3t. 3t, 3t, quantity 3t squared is what we want. Um, and the reason we do that again is because we're stuck with this 3t here. Uh, it'd be nice to get rid of this 3, but we really can't. So this 3 is stuck on this t because it's inside of the cosine, right? So because we're stuck with it, let's just work with it like that. So um, because down here we want, we want this down here, we want 3t quantity squared, uh, that's the same thing as 9t squared, right? So we want to put a 9 over here. So if we're going to do that, let's multiply the top and the bottom here by 9. Okay, so <clears throat> bracket, bracket. Um, then what happens is this 9 on top, uh, it's just, if we have a 9 in the numerator like that, it's just like multiplying everything by 9. So let's go ahead and just pull it out, because uh, it's just a constant, so we can do that. So we have 9 over 8 times limit as t approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine 3t all divided by 9t squared, okay? Now remember, 9t uh, squared, so we already wrote it once over here, but let's just write it again. 9t uh, squared, that's the same thing as saying 3t quantity squared, right? So let's go ahead and uh, replace that, let's replace this with that. So instead of 9t squared, we're going to say quantity 3t squared, like that. Right, now we're almost there, um, so let's get rid of this now. So now uh, t, 3t, and then 3t quantity squared. So all we need is for this to be a 3t now. But again, we could just tack a 3 onto there, right? Because remember, as t approaches 0, um, where does 3t go? Well, multiply both sides by 3, then 3t goes to 3 times 0, but 3 times 0 is 0. So if t is approaching 0, so is 3t. All right, now we're set because, uh, why are we set? Because here we have 3t, 3t, and 3t quantity squared. In other words, we have a thing, that thing again, and then that same thing squared, right? So just like before in example six, we had x, x, and x squared. Now we have 3t, 3t, and 3t squared. So um, let's make a substitution now. Let's say uh, x equals 3t. All right, so we're going to take all of our three t's and replace them with an x. So then we're going to have uh, 9 over 8 times limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of x divided by x squared. Look familiar? No? Yeah, kind of, maybe. So uh, this is 9 over 8 times, what's this? This is our example 6. Okay, this uh, limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x squared, that's our example 6. Um, and we know from example 6 that that's one half. So uh, what we have here is nine over eight times one half, or in other words, nine over sixteen. All right. So um, you know, if we didn't do example six, we'd go through that whole process here, and it, this would be quite a long uh, example here. So uh, nine over sixteen is our final answer for example seven, and you know this doesn't really look all that complicated, but the steps they're pretty involved, and there are quite a bit of them. Um, especially, you know, if we work it all out in detail like this, there's going to be a lot of writing involved. Um, but the idea is to, you know, just remember these special trig limits here and see, okay, is there some way that I can maybe manipulate these in order to use one of these? Uh, and that's kind of the idea that you want to try in general with these special trig limits.